Okay, let's move on to 3.2. So 3.2 is going to be using an annexture, so make sure that you have that. Let's read the scenario. So it says, Mangiwe, one of the students in the nursing college, visited the Ambleside Town Centre and stayed at the Queen's Hotel for one week. Right, just setting up the, the, the scenario. Then it says the Ambleside, down, the Ambleside Town Centre map is given in Annex to C. Make sure that you have that, right? It looks like this. Yours will be printed a bit better than mine. My printer is a little bit um, <laughs> dodgy. But please always make note of where north is, right? So here's north. We know that we go clockwise. So it's north, east, south, west. I always remember that as never eat silk worms. That's important because they're probably going to ask us some form of directions. Please take note of the key over here, right? This information will give us um, not only uh, what symbols mean, but it also is probably going to be a bit of interpretation later, okay? Then importantly, always with the map, we have scale, right? So please take note of that. Have a ruler with you. As I say that, I'm actually gonna take out my own ruler. Make sure that you have that, because we're gonna need that. Then, let's go and look at the questions. So it says, use the annexure. And identify the road in which parking is not allowed. Now, when it gives you a prescription like that, you should you should be thinking, okay, I'm going to go to the key because that's going to give me a bit of an indication of where I need to go. We look through the key, we read through each of them, and we say, okay, parking is not allowed in areas where this little box with an A in it is shown. So we're going to go to the map and we're going to say, okay, where is there an A in a box? So we look, be thorough, be thorough, don't stress if you don't see it. I'm seeing it over here, okay? So, and it's pointing to view terrace. So we see that on view terrace, no parking is allowed according to the map. I don't see any other A's on here. So there's only one place, okay? Perfect. So go write that out. Make sure that you are spelling it correctly because there's no excuse for you not to spell it correctly, okay? Because it's given. Let's now look at the next question. It says, Mangiwe travels from Keswick to Rydal Road. Give her a reason why she cannot turn right into Compton Road. Okay, so let's see where Mangiwe is going. So here's Keswick, she's going on Rydal, and here's Comps Compton Road. Okay, so if she's going here, this is to her right, and obviously there's nothing to her left. But do you see here that these arrows, right, these arrows indicate the flow of traffic. But these arrows are only in one direction. They're not in two directions. So what that means is that Mangiwe can't turn down into Comston because Comston is a one-way road. And if she turns right into Comston, she's going to be going into ongoing traffic, which is dangerous and illegal. So there's your answer. We're going to say, right, you're going to say Comston. Comston is a one-way road. And there's your answer. Okay, if you want to explain it a bit more saying, you know, she would turn into ongoing traffic, etc., you're welcome to do that, but that is sufficient. Let's continue to our next question. Okay, so all of these have been interpretation up until now, and now we get our, our direction question, which we knew was coming. Give the general direction, give the general direction of the Queen's Hotel from the tennis courts. Okay, so the most important thing is that we go and we find where these things are. Okay, I just want to make sure that you can see the whole thing. Okay, so here's the tennis courts and the Queen's Hotel is here. Let's just see where we're measuring it from though, right? Is it from the tennis courts or from the Queen's Hotel? So it says the direction of Queen's Hotel from the tennis courts. So what does that mean? It means I'm standing at the tennis courts and I'm looking towards the Queen's Hotel. So we know that it's in this direction here. Because we've written in all our cardinal points of north, east, south, and west, we know that from the tennis court, to Queen's Hotel is going to be northwest. We always say our dominant cardinal points, which is north or south, followed by our less dominant points. So it would be northwest. Done. Okay. You can write it as NW or you can write it as northwest, right? Either are accepted. Let's now go on to the next question. These next couple of questions are a little bit meatier, right? So there's a little bit more that we need to do for these ones. So it says on the map, X is a point at the information center and Y is a point at the University of Cumbria, right? So let's just make sure we know where we're at. So there's X, right? That's the information and Y is at the University of Cumbria. Okay, so what's quite nice is they've drawn that line for us so we don't have to draw it ourselves. We know we're going to have to measure it. That's pretty stock standard, but let's continue. 
Use the scale on the map to calculate in yards the straight line distance from x to y. Okay, so straight line distance from x to y in yards, we know we're going to have to use our scale. So let's make sure that we're doing this correctly. So let's go here. Let's calculate this. Okay, I am seeing that it is about 40 from x to y. Let me just do this correctly. I'm thinking it's about 48, right? 48 millimeters, okay? So it's about 48 millimeters. You'll be given grace probably from 46, 40, 46, 47 to, to 52 kind of thing, right? So if, you, if you're if measuring and you're like, yo, I didn't get the same as Margie, don't stress, right? You should get somewhere around there. So I'm going to say 48 millimeters, okay? So that is what it is between X and Y on map, just so that we know what we're talking about, Okay? Let's now go and measure our scale because we know we're not going to be able to get our measurement in reality if we don't understand our scale. So let's look here. Mm, if I measure this nicely, I get 21 millimeters. So 21 millimeters is 110 yards. So that's the scale on the map. 21 millimeters equals 110 yards on the map. Okay. So the way that I generally would do this is I would make this one millimeter and I'll get what this is in yards, and then I would times it up to 48 millimeters and we'd be done. So that's sort of the steps I would do, okay? If you do it in a different way and you get the same answer, perfect, not a problem, as long as you understand. Okay, so what do I do to this side to get it to one? I would divide it by 21, do you agree? 21 divided by 21 is one. What I do to the one side, I have to do to the other side. So I'm gonna say 110 divided by 21, and we get quite a messy little fraction. Uh, I mean, a, a messy little decimal. If you want to write that as a fraction, I would advise it. So it would be 110 over 21. Okay. Then we, what do we do to 1 to get to 48? Well, we times it by 48. What I do to the one side, I have to do to the other side. So take this fraction. Oh, goodness me. Um, take this fraction, right, that you have and times it by 48. And your answer would then be 251.43 yards. Okay, let's just check that we've done everything correctly. It didn't say anything about rounding off. Let's just check, right? Oh, I've left my paper over here, hold a second. So it says, use the scale on the map to calculate in yards a straight line distance from x to y it doesn't tell us to round off right but i saw in the in the um memo that it did round it off so if you left it like this technically it should be fine it didn't say that it had to be in in whole numbers or whole yards but you could say that's equivalent to 251 yards if you're rounding it off right because remember if you're rounding it off to the nearest yard you look at the first decimal place four is less than five so you round it down Okay, so that's us done there, right? Important that you know how to do questions like two point, uh, three point two point four, because they always come up, literally every single every single paper I've seen. Okay, let's just make sure that we are seeing the question, and then let's continue. So it says Mangiwe parked in Church Street from twelve to three twenty five. So first thing you should do there is you should just do this three hours and 25 minutes that she was there. As you read, just do that, right? It just gives you an indication of what's going on. We know we're gonna be asked something about time. They wouldn't have given us time if they didn't want us to use it. Then it says a traffic officer who monitors the area issued her with a fine, okay? So we know that Church Street is probably somewhere where she can't be um, parking all the time, but let's see. It says write down for which offense the traffic officer issued her with a fine. So let's firstly go and find Church Street. Okay, let me just move this across so that you can see. Right, so here's Church Street. And what do we see the whole way along Church Street? We see these little dots, okay? So let's just go and see these little dots. What does that mean on the, on the uh, key? It means a maximum of one hour free parking before 5 p.m. Well, we know that she's in violation of that because she's been there for three hours and 25 minutes when she was only allowed to be there for an hour. So it's fairly easy to see what the offence is, right? The offence is that she parked too long in an area where she was only allowed to be parked for an hour. So if you want to write this, 
right? You would say um, her free parking, right? Her free parking time of one hour, right, was over. Or you could say she parked in a place where she could only park for an hour, for longer than an hour, and therefore she should pay a fine or was liable to pay a fine. Okay, that's just explaining it. Now, let's look at B. B is the one that is going to require a little bit of um, uh, uh, sort of concentrated calculation. So it says, Mangiwe was fined 79.75 pounds by the traffic officer. Calculate to the nearest pound the rate per hour for this fine. Okay, so firstly, she wasn't fined for the full three hours and 25 minutes, right? She was only fined for two hours and 25 minutes because she was allowed to park on Church Street for an hour, right? So firstly, let, let's do that. So you say she was fined for two hours and 25 minutes, okay? Now we know the fine amount, right? The fine amount was... 79 and 75. So we will need to find a rate. We want to find a rate of charge per hour. That's effectively what we're wanting to do. It's a rate. Okay. Now, so basically we want to say we want charge per hour. So we're going to have the 79.75 over 2.25. Now, you can't just plug that into your calculator because this isn't all in hours. This is in hours and minutes. Okay, so we have a little bit of a problem because we only want it per hour. So we need to convert those minutes into hours. So 2.25 in hours and minutes is 2 hours and 25 over 60 minutes. Okay, so now we're going to convert this whole thing into hours because that's converting it into hours. So put that into your calculator and you'll see that it is 2.4166 going on and on and on. Save that in your calculator, I would say, right? Or you can just use the answer function. So say 79.75, put it over your answer, and you'll see that the fine or the charge per hour, right, is, this is sort of a little interlude, so this leads on to this, right? So your charge is 33 pounds. Let me make sure you can see that per hour. Okay, and then you are done there. Okay, so do you see you have to work quite methodically, think about what you're doing before you just apply things, okay? You need to be very, very um, careful of the words that are said and what's being asked because that's often the most common mistake. Okay, we only have one more question, um, which will be two videos, and then we are done with this paper. Well done, guys.